The Blazers fall to three and four with a tough loss to the Grizzlies. However, Shaden Sharp looks legit. Tamani Kamara might have been the steal of that big trade with Phoenix that landed DeAndre Ayton. And in the bad news department, Robert Williams III could be out for the season with a knee injury. In the season of development, that is definitely not a good thing to the Blazers. Welcome to the Blazer Focus Podcast. I'm Aaron Fentress of the Oregonian and Oregon Live. And I'm joined by Craig Burnback, who is living it up at Disneyland with his six-year-old. And I just heard rumors that like you were pushing little kids out of the way to get on the rise and it's caused a lot of special <laughs> trouble down there, Craig. Just you know, let the kids know about you. I know you pay. I know you pay. That's how I was. I spent the money. I should really get on cars first. But it's about the kids. Right? I, that's a that's a false rumor. I would say it's my first time. It. It's my first time here, so I got a first time button. Me and my son <laughs> both got first time buttons. Nice. My wife's a pro. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I've never, like I said, I didn't uh, never no idea what to expect, and uh, you know, it's had its ups and downs. I think every father who's uh, done this trip with their six year old would say there's some ups and downs. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, and, and and there, yep, there, that that's my yeah. wife popping out, asking if there's video. <laughs> you can see yeah. we're having a down right now. Like it's he's done. Yes, you're he in. is done. You are, so in, we're, <laughs> you are actually still down there in a hotel, showing your dedication to the yep. Blazer Focus podcast and the Blazer listeners, Blazer fan listeners. Um, okay, so I've done the Disneyland thing numerous times. One of the mistakes I kind of made, I said kind of, is that when we took our kids when they were pretty young, I want to say eight and six was probably the second time we went. I'm a get my money's worth kind of guy. And that place is not cheap. <laughs> and so I'm no. trying to close it down. So like about six, seven o'clock, my wife was like, we should probably think about winding this down. I'm like, no, we're staying forgetting that I'm dealing with eight and six year olds. Now my eight year old Taryn, she would just be, she's ready. She doesn't, she doesn't want to go. Peyton is a little tired and they walk and, and they, in my mind, I'm thinking they're eight it's and six. They can walk for 10 hours, right? But instead, you're supposed to be thinking they're only eight and six. Walking for 10 hours is sapping their energy, right? Um, and when we left, there's a great picture. I'll, I'll text you someday. We're on the bus going back to the hotel. And the kids are in the back just conked. And it's just, I look, I look at every once in a while, I'm like, yeah, I kind of overdid it that night. But anyway, <laughs> fun was had by all. Twenty three thousand, like twenty five thousand steps, is about what we've done. Uh-huh. So that, and now some of them have been piggyback. You know, like he didn't take all of them, uh, but my wife does the piggybacking because <laughs> my son says I'm the worst piggyback person ever. So my wife's got to, I handle the bag, she handles the, uh, uh, you know, she handles the piggyback. I try, but yeah, no, yep, I'm, I've, uh, I let it all go. I said, you know what, this is, uh, this is why we work for day things like this. Okay. Didn't get to do this as a kid, uh, so I tried to let the the frugalness leave me. Right, that's what I that's you know I tried what? to do. So that's where I'm at. It, see, that's that's what I have to do because to me it's still like wait, eight hundred dollars for a day for a family of four. Let's let's go to the mall. <laughs> I'll buy you guys five hundred dollars or whatever you want. Uh, yeah, I just I mean, yeah. But you we just did have say to, my you, wife you and just I have to let it go. Do, just let it go. Just give them yeah, the car and just turn around. I, I, Sometimes I'll say I'll tell my wife you handle it, and I'll just walk away, so I have to see the bill. Uh, I will say at one, at one point, my wife said, turned to me and said, you know how many Legos we could have bought for this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he might have liked it better, but you know, uh, but you know, I also, you know, I was paying attention to Blazer games, caught them, uh, caught fourth, fourth quarters, the ups and downs. Yeah. Um, and uh, I will say the op, let's start with the op, right? Shane Sharp. Okay. Shane let's Sharp. start there. I said, remember the last podcast, I'm like, I want to see him get third, drop third. Yeah. I mean, he must have been listening, right? He must have been listening because he said he stepped up his game. And, you know, you said in the – during training camp, there were some questions about whether he was ready. They didn't think he was there. Well, he looked ready in a couple games, and he is showing confidence. And that, to me, is a huge sign. I don't know what you do now when Simons comes back. Like, you can't not start him, right? Like, he's playing too good. You oh, know, Shaden. like, Shaden, like, you, you know – I, I've been impressed with that cool, calm collectiveness 
doesn't do much for you when you're con- when he's playing like he was like a little bit confused. But when he's dropping step like that step back, Man. oh my god, like that's unguardable what he's what he's pulling off there. And his shot looks great. I yeah. mean, um they've the Devin Booker thing two weeks ago seemed crazy to me. And now I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> my bad, Chauncey. Like I-, I got you. Now I see it. You know, um so that you know, that to me is the biggest positive that's uh, that's come out uh with the you know the um with the victories um and even you know like I said the wins and losses aren't gonna matter that much even though I know some fans want wins. Uh but to me seeing Shade and Sharp shows these signs of what he might be able to do consistently on a a night in and night out basis. Um that to me is super important. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where what does ready mean exactly? And, um, you know, he's able to score. There's no doubt about that. He can score from anywhere. Um, but he still struggles with a lot of the nuances and, and um, uh, technical aspects of the game. Like, like take, take, for instance, the block shot on Luke Kennard at the end of the regulation the other night. He totally <laughs> lost Kennard. <laughs> I totally lost him. Yes, he did. And then he said, he admitted it after the game. He was like, I lost him. and But I saw the ball fly to the corner, so I figured he might have been in the corner. So I ran to the corner, and he jumps before Kennard even, you know, lets it go and stays in the air long enough to spot it. So that's an example of him. And not foul. And not foul. Because he, well, he and blocked, not his, foul. He blocked so high in the air. How can you foul him? Yep. But, <laughs> but you know, this is not right there. Well, okay, he blows his assignment, but he makes up for it athletically. Uh, and then there's a whole question of, you know, Against good teams, is he still going to make so many mistakes? He's going to cost them to the point where it overshadows the good stuff in terms of winning and losing. But at the same time, like you said, winning and losing is not paramount right now. So you're just going to let him play and work through it, which was the plan all along. It's just a question of whether or not he was going to start. Now, for me, when Ant comes back, which is still a ways away, so you know, we got probably five weeks, right? When Ant comes back, you know, if you really want to start your best players, you're going to start Brogdon, Ant, and put Shade in at the three. They're not going to do that, though. They're going to go with Scoot. They're definitely going to start Ant. I mean, decide if you want to start Shade at the three or if you just decide, well, for balance sake, let's have Matisse still start there, bring in Shaden early with the second unit, and then he can finish, right? There's all, there's sorts of, all sorts of different ways to try and do whatever they're going to try and do with these guys. But when winning doesn't matter, it's like at some point, as long as they're, you know, Putting them buckets, let them roll. But man, he he's effortless and, in the three, two. Like there's there's really uh, nothing he uh, cannot do offensively. It's yes. crazy. And I, I'm done with like I don't, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm I'm done with Matisse. Like no, I don't need to see Matisse start. I just don't but, like but starting. It doesn't okay, but starting is not necessarily playing the most minutes. It's like it, it's just having crazy. Yeah, balance. Matisse is start. Matisse is starting now without Simons and not and and not playing a ton of minutes. Right. You know, they they don't. To me, if you're not going to use him for what he is, and I, you know, then what what's the point? Like he's playing him sometimes thirteen minutes in a game was I think is low at one point, and but he's averaging like seventeen minutes a game. So why start him then? To me, it's not like it's um, he's not he's not playing great. You know, it's he's not scoring at all, which is – it's just he's a role player, and this role doesn't fit this team unless it's all that other stuff. But if it were all that other stuff, he'd be playing more, in my opinion. So I'm like, as they as bad – as, as they said in the Astrodome, and bad news bears too, let them play. <laughs> let the youngest play. Not, like I am – like, what's the point? I went there. <laughs> wow. Because you love that movie, too. Eh. I like the, right, I like we're not the first continue. one, but the second one was kind of disappointing. Um, anyway. Uh, it was important. I, I mean, I, I'm one of these guys. I, I hear you. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just think the whole starting thing when you're developing is completely overrated. I think they can figure it out and get good minutes either way. But, yes, I, I, if you're playing, if you want to start your – because if you – if you're going to start shading because he's buried in Matisse, then why aren't you starting Brogdon because he's buried in Oh, that's right, because you're developing. Okay, then if that's the case, then yes, there's an argument for starting shading. Okay, but... It makes more sense to me to start Brogdon in a way because he's playing well, and he, you could see the difference when he's on the court. I just don't see that difference with... 
you know. But he's playing defense. With Thibel on the court. I not playing defense. I know, but, like, do you really see it that much? I mean, I guess, but not really. Um, and I, and, and I'm, I'm one of those guys that will admit, like, when I'm watching the game and it's – I'm watching more offense and defense. It's just the natural thing that people do, right? Unless the game is super close and it's the playoffs. Right. Um, I'm like, yeah, they don't know. No one plays defense in the, in the NBA that hard, you know, week two. You know, it just look at the scores and the way things are going. Um, I just don't see that part as being that important, but I'm also not Chauncey Billups and I'm not the, you know, I'm not the coaching staff. So, and you're right. It doesn't matter. Right now, Matisse is not playing starter minutes. He's playing sub minutes. So they obviously agree with what, you know, both of us, right? That that they want to give the minutes to others over Thibault. Kamara's been um, getting a lot of those minutes at the three, too. A lot of those minutes, right? And why and he's not ready. <laughs> like on offense, he's definitely not ready, you know, but why not? I mean, I don't know. Should we just slip to that topic? Let's go. No, we got. We got. Like, we got to go. We got to talk about Rob right. Williams. We, we got to talk about that. Oh we're gosh, gonna, you're bringing me down. Gonna, we went from good. Uh, see, I was trying to stay on the on the positive this, tip. This is, break, uh, this is breaking news. Okay, Robert breaking Williams, news. Backup center. Uh, Adrian Ornish, I think, first reported uh, would have knee surgery. Sources have confirmed for the Oregonian that it's pretty bad. It could be season ending. Shams uh, reported that it's. Uh, Definitely, definitely could be season ending as well. It's probably one of these things where it could be three to four months, but at that point, why are you going to bring him back? Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously a huge blow. He was considered to be a big piece of all the trades that were made, the Florida trades, of course, one of them being sending uh, Holiday to the Celtics for a pick and some swaps and getting back um, Brogdon and Robert Williams. Robert Williams, a huge luxury as a backup center, a defensive-minded guy who finishes at the rim. You know, definitely a, a deterrent in the paint. He's out probably for the season. And, you know, look, you and I came into the season, a lot of people came into the season wondering how long Brogdon and Robert will be on this roster because if you can flip them into picks, that's probably the goal. Clearly now you can't do that with Robert. You're not going to be able to flip him into picks, at least now. And maybe if he heals up, you can trade him in the offseason or maybe next All-Star break. Or maybe you just end up keeping him, who knows. But, um, yeah, I mean, what, what do you think of this development? And, th and this, you know, he, he already had problems with his other knee. This is his right knee. So now you have a, a, a center with two, you know, knee injuries of some significance. You know, what? yeah, what do you make of this? Well, this was his good knee. So that's bad, right? Like, you know, it, it was uh, – but, yeah, that was the whole thing. I mean, that's why I think the Celtics were willing to give him up uh, because – you know, what he does is exactly what good teams need. Uh, he is a high flying, uh, rim protecting, rim, you know, dunking center. Like, and 26 years old, 25, 26 years old. Um, but this is so when I look at the, you know, the things that can affect the Blazers now, really, like, I don't really care about the wins and losses, like, during the, unless something crazy happens, right? And they keep winning three out of four and we got to eat. You know, we got to just say, oh, I guess we don't know anything about basketball, right? I guess they are good. Um, what I look at is what what impact is this going to have on the Blazers medium and long term? And the Simons injury bummed me out because I wanted to see, see Simons go off because I just don't see a place for him on this team the way the way they want to do it. Like you just don't. He plays the same position as the guy you drafted third overall and possibly the same position that you drafted um, in the lottery in Sharp the year before. So him getting hurt slows down like, uh-oh, you know, seeing him being a dominant guard and then possibly being able to get some really, you know, top-level pieces for, the, for, for him. And with Williams, the guy can't play. No one's going to want him. And his contract goes from really good to really bad um, because he's still got multiple years left on his contract. And now, you know, if this guy can't play, which he's never – I think he's played over 50 games once. Is that right? You know, it's, it's, not, it's not good, um, especially if he can't – play the rest of the year because then there's no trading him and then he's got to get back be healthy and productive um 
So you're looking at a lost year and the potential that the piece you thought was valuable is not valuable. Um, so that stinks because he didn't even make it through 10 games. You know what I mean? Like that's just not, that is, that is the worry with him. And the Celtics right now are probably going, yep, that's why we did this. Right. When everyone wondered, why would you give this up? Um, this is why, because they're going to go with, you know, when they get in the playoffs, whoever they decide to be their, you know, their Robert Williams, their backup center, they're going to pick a guy that they don't worry about being able to play minutes. And in the playoffs, they were worried about playing him. You know what I mean? Like they were, is he healthy? Is he ready? Is he going to be able to play? Um, so they didn't feel they could count on him. And the Blazers took a risk. And right now that risk um, just took a, you know, the stock went down, right? Like you got him hoping the stock was going to go up and the stock went down. So a, a bummer. And who didn't like watching the guy dunk and block, you know, like, the guy's fun to watch. Guy's shooting 65% because he doesn't shoot anything with it, you know, from further than three inches away from the rim. So that's a bummer. So he's played over 50 games twice. Uh, only played 35 last year. Yeah. He has two years left on his deal after this, only making 12.5 and 13.3. So that's obviously not a huge, you know, burden financially. And he's he's going to come back from this. I don't believe that this is, you know, Something that but in a year, come. and now he's had knee surgery on two both knees. Yeah. I guess it'll be a year starting next season. Uh, if he missed the season, I mean, he could probably be ready to play by April. But you know, I mean, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Bottom line is, he's probably out for the season. So yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to be positive. You know, they don't care about winning this year. Anyway, so either they're going to trade him or you're going to have him next year. So who cares? So at the end of the day, sucks that they can't you know have guys work with him obviously and try and help him or have him help develop the culture they're trying to, to develop and you know see it's weird like okay now they don't have a real backup for Aiton you gotta go to Moses Brown maybe that's really gonna hurt them oh wait but we don't care about it hurting them because no one cares about them winning so <laughs> it's probably hastens again wins and losses <laughs> not 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 why I'm upset about the injury right Upset because I wanted to see him play. I wanted his stock rise. And heck, you went with two centers, right? One right. of them's got to. One of them's got to make it. <laughs> and right now, like we're we got one out. The other one's, you know, eh. <laughs> like, okay, eh. let's talk about that next. <laughs> Where are you at on Aiden? Because <clears throat> people people have been hyping him a little bit. Because he had a nice little run there and he had the 23 rebounds, et cetera, et cetera. But he's also had three games of under 10 points. Now, Bill Oaks has blamed some of that on the offense and where it is right now on the fact that they expected him to get a lot of open looks playing with someone like Ant. And then as Scoot develops, yes. Scoot would be able to set him more up more often. Obviously, Scoot has been troubling, excuse me, struggling. So that's not really on him that much. It's just sort of how things are going. I asked him today if he was frustrated with it. He says he's not at all. Like, this is all part of a process. They're just trying to figure things out, work things out as a team and what they're trying to do and not do and stuff like that. And so I, I say to that, I'm like, you're right. You know, you know, yes, they're trying to figure things out. And he has had some moments where you're like, wow. And then he's had some moments where he's kind of disappeared. But it's not like the team is feeling like, oh, he's letting us down. Like, if he only scores seven points, but only takes seven shots, then it's not necessarily his fault because he's not getting many shots it's like he's shooting 30 percent, so he's just not getting the ball very often within the flow of the offense that they're running right now and the things that they're doing so i'm not overly concerned about it i mean we all know he comes with some inconsistencies uh from phoenix those are showing themselves now but again no one seems to be concerned about it including him Yeah, I, I see a little bit of both. There's no, I just, I'm just shocked. And I get it. Anthony Simons is going to be his pick and roll partner. Right now, they don't have one, right? I, that said, Brogdon doesn't stink. Um, and it, he hasn't, you know, it hasn't worked there. I just am surprised at 10 points a game. You know, I mean, I'm just surprised. I and mean, the guy averages 18 and 10. Felt like that was going to be but easy. But he's only taking um, nine But the shots. NBA is hard. He's only taking no nine shots. right, uh, which and is that him? and I can't blame him because he's shooting, 
he's shooting 56%, right? I mean, it's not, he's not getting to the free throw line, you know, much because um, mm-hmm. he's not getting the ball. I, so I am, and what I like about him is that he hasn't, if he can figure, if he honestly believes and sticks with that, like, hey, it's a process. Because he also has to know he didn't come here to win this year, right? Right. He knows they're not going to win. He's 25 years old, though, and he's been in the league. So since, you know, 2018. So that patience is harder for a a guy that's played at the highest level, played with guys at the highest level. I don't know how you do it. You know, I don't know how a guy like Aiton can just hit the brakes and say, okay, I get it. I am not on a team that's going to try to win a championship. I'm here. I am. Uh, I, I'm in year five. I'm 25. I got some time. I'm going to let, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it chill. Um, and if he can do it, I think that's great. And it shows great maturity for a guy that's sometimes been accused of not being mature. So I think that it's too early to say anything. I just, I'm not going to sit here and rave about it. Right. Because 23 rebounds is fantastic. That's great. Averaging 13 rebounds a game is really good. Um, but, you know, gosh, he's your, you would think, you would think like that you could do stuff, right? Other guys have scored when they're in this league uh, at center without great guard play. So just saying, <clears throat> well, you can't do anything. Um and I don't know. I mean, are they just not running anything for him? Is it just well, they're, not open? They're, you know, they don't seem to be. I mean, whenever Brog, okay, the, Grant is definitely being more aggressive. They've asked him to be more aggressive. He's doing yes. that. And so I had a funny exchange with him yesterday. Uh, we were all talking with him as a group, and then everyone dispersed, and I asked him another question. I was like, so, like, you're not a ball hog by nature. Like, how do you do this? And he's like, man, it's tough, you know, because I have to have this mentality to be aggressive. And so he's been really aggressive. That's taking away opportunities. Shaden, obviously, he shoots a lot, and um, he that does. Takes away op- yeah, that He's not takes afraid. away opportunities. It's, he doesn't. Brogdon is jacking it, up shots. He that shoots a takes lot. Op- yep. So if ever, if you got three high volume shooters around you, <laughs> taking up shots, and no one's really running a deft, you know, pick and roll with you like you would expect Ant to be doing. You're not going to get him any opportunities now. If he if he were taking 15 shots a game and scoring 10 points, that's a problem. But he's only getting nine shots. I don't know if I blame him. Yeah, no, I I see it. I mean, I I hear what you're saying. I'm just, yeah, I'd give him a C, right? Like if we're going to do the grading right now. It's a C. It's not. It's satisfactory, and it's too early. True. It's not, we're, um, we're being understanding of the situation, and but obviously, yes. 10 and 13 can't cut it. He's got to be. To me, he's got to be 23-13, 23-12 at some point. I'll tell you, I mean, the Blazers, 18. They're going to get out of him what they want. If he's 18 and 10, then it's like, eh, big deal. Well, I'm just saying this year, if he's 18 oh, and 10, I'm like, year. okay, oh, you know. Well, yeah, you know, that's fine. Yeah, but when they want to win, if they want to contend with him, Scoot, and Shaden being the, the main trio, he's got to be 23 and 13. He's got to be dominant. He's got to be a force that teams are fearing, not – He's going to come out there and maybe he gets 25 today or maybe he gets nine. He can't do that. He can't be that guy. And if you're going to make 30 mil, even though that's like nothing, but you know, but I'm just saying like you, I don't want to blame him, but I'm just saying that guys in the NBA know how to get theirs that are, that are upper echelon players. And, but they have you the traded ball. for him. I, I, I get it. I get it. But, He's in a system I'm where like, someone has to get him the ball. I'm just saying, like, do you think there aren't a lot of comparisons to Aiton anymore? You know, there just aren't because he's not Giannis. He's not Jokic. You know what I mean? And you bet, he better not be Nurkic. So, like, you know, like, so where where are you with him? Like, there's just not a lot of guys like that anymore that uh, don't shoot, don't handle, and yet you want them to be – all stars. So, I mean, even when you look at guys like Brooke Lopez, the guy shoots threes. So you can't compare, right? Like, right. I, you look around the league, and there's just not a lot of guys like him. The 
you know, Embiid's a great all even even Cat, like who's people say he's you know, you don't know. Well, I do know that he would not shoot the ball five times a game, right? Like no matter what. He he, he might he might shoot five for twenty seven, but he's gonna shoot because he's gonna go get the ball. Um it's just a tough comparison in the NBA now to 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 know well, what do you do then if you don't get the ball, right? And you know you're way better than everyone else on the like Kamara shouldn't be shooting if I'm in. Um, Brogdon shouldn't be shooting more than me. So I don't know. And that's what we'll we'll find out. And and in the end, again, what does it matter? As long as he stays focused, stays in shape, looks um, good. But yeah, I mean, I, I just can't imagine him averaging 10 points a game for the season, right? I mean, you did in in no scenario did you say you're going to get Eight no. and he's going to average ten boys a game. No, I so don't, I don't let's see if it. Let's um, see what happens. Yeah, I don't think this is going to continue. I think he's going to. The question is whether he's going to be dominant or just have a good season. Oh, what's up, little man? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Lego action. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, it's we'll see, man. It's it's just it's just weird. Yeah, because, give him the pass. Yeah, it's just weird because they're not running stuff where it's obvious they're trying to necessarily get him the ball and guys are coming down and when they see when they get their shot they're taking it and that just takes away opportunities for him he's not a focal point he's, uh, he's a fourth, i guess my question really fourth, is why he's a fourth option so why I, I think part okay so part of it okay what bill Ups has said one they plan on doing a lot with him and in that's one two scoot hasn't been very good necessarily to do a lot with Aiden, and now he's hurt, of course. Three, Brogdon can do some things with Aiden, but, you know, Brogdon can score, and he's not necessarily, yeah. for whatever reason, they're not doing a lot of things where he's got to give up the ball to Aiden. They're not running those types of plays. Shaden's looking for a shot. Grant's looking for a shot. So Chauncey's not forcing the team to run things through Aiden right now. For, you know, for whatever reason, I think that'll change as we move forward. He was, Chauncey even said that he didn't really start putting in plays for Aiden until after the preseason games were played because he wanted him to focus on just being within the flow of the offense and rebounding and playing defense. So that stuff's going to take time, especially with Ant out. So I just think it's just like it, it's just how the games have pretty much gone. And we'll see if that changes because you have to get him rolling and becoming a major part of what you're trying to do because he has to hit. If he doesn't hit for you, and you have to make a decision in a couple of years, are you going to pay him fifty million when he's already making thirty five? Are you going to let him walk or trade him? And that doesn't work out. Then to me, everything that they did crumbles because the picks aren't going to be what people are fantasizing them out to be. And if Brogdon's gone and Williams is damaged, good or gone, goods are gone, and then Aiden doesn't work out, what'd you, what'd you get for Dame? Meanwhile, Tyler Hero is playing by like an all star. We'll come back to that months later. I'm going to give him some months before we get into that. But my point is... We know where I stood on him. I know. You and I both agreed, right? (laughs) You know? But if if, if it turns out that Hero's way better than Aiden, then it's just not a good thing for the Blazers. They need him to be better than just good. He needs to be special. And so far, he hasn't been, but... Unless Kamara Scotty Pippen. If Kamara Scotty Pippen, it's all good. All right. Let's talk about that next. (laughs) Okay, so I'm let me start this. I'm not gonna lie to you. Covering a team that's doing what they're doing is difficult. Like I get it, and we've talked about how we're gonna approach things. You know, the season wins don't matter that much. Blah 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 blah. blah. I mean, dude, they got to score twenty six to two in the last eight minutes last night, and it doesn't matter because if anything, that puts them closer to another high lottery pick. But. What I see happening is that because they had these few victories and they did some things and because everyone's so excited about the rebuild and and, and certain levels and watching young guys, and it's kind of fun to do that. We all do that with our favorite teams. Kamara has been blown out to be this folk hero. And he's, don't get me wrong, he's done a good job defensively. There's no doubt about that. Offensively, though, not even remotely close to where someone needs to be shooting 29%. Effective field goal percentage of 38. That went up from 33. And the, the truth is, is that Kamara doesn't even play. He's not even in the rotation on a good team. He's in this rotation because of what they're trying to do. So I'm sort of taking what he's... And, and injuries. Now injuries. And, and injuries, right. So 
I'm sort of like, okay, he's six eight. He he's 23 years old. He he will commit to being aggressive and playing defense. I give him an A plus for that. And everyone talks about how they, you know they can put him on anyone and how much it means to the vets and the coaches and the management that he will do all the dirty work and he's not a he's not a selfish player. He's not trying to sh- take shots he shouldn't be taking. He's out there doing his job. That's great. But you know, for me to buy into him being a part of the rotation the next time they become good, we got to see so much more. Like, it's just, he's got to be able to score one or he's just going to be get completely exposed to more minutes he plays. And he has to do the things he's done against good teams. And so we'll see coming up. You got Sacramento, you got Lakers, you got Utah, you got Phoenix, you got Oklahoma City, you got tons of good teams coming up. So we'll see where he fit or starts to look like he might fit in after the next 10 games as opposed to these first six because his offense to me or lack thereof is, is a concern. Yeah, to me, it's all about like hope and, 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 and enjoying the team, right? You got this guy, he got kind of, he was the second round pick, but oh, they like him. And then you see stuff and you're like, oh, now I know why I like it. They like him. And now you hope, right? You hope that a second round pick turns into something. Right. But look, we've been around this team long enough to know that Jake Lehman was a, was a folk hero for a while, right? Like everyone wanted Jake Lehman to start. And he did. <laughs> he did start for a few games. And uh, he's not a good NBA player. You know, like he's just not. Um, but I, I'm fi- I, I totally get why people are excited. He brings energy. He's a pest. Everyone, every fan base loves that kind of guy. Blazer fans really love that kind of guy. Right. Um, because, you know, especially out in the West, like scoring's always been the thing, right? And so when you get a guy that just wants to play defense um, and realizes that's his skill, that's not something Blazer fans have seen a lot of, right? Even when they supposedly get him like Covington, it was a letdown, right? He, it just wasn't that. This guy does – he knows he can't score. He shoots because, like, eventually you're like, well – I'm really open, and there's three seconds on the shot clock. I guess I have to. Um, but he's 6'8". He runs the floor. He's athletic, and he is not afraid to do dirty work. And so I'm down with people, you know, giving him, loving him, getting excited when he gets in the game because they are like us. They know wins and losses. If they're educated Blazer fans, they also know wins and losses don't matter, and they know if they, if Kamara – is something it changes the dynamic of the trade for Damian Lillard, right? Like right. it changes you. Like if you if he ends up being this shocking, you know, I'm gonna say a name. I do not expect this, but you know, Draymond Green changed the Warriors, a second round pick that's gonna, you know, I believe is a Hall of Famer. And this, you know, so you look and you you envision these. Cra- and by the way, he can't shoot either. He averages mm-hmm. seven a game. Sure. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and I'm not that, you know, I'm not going to. So the, it's okay to hope and to dream. And that's what I see with him. Uh, and also I see a guy that's willing to put his nose in there and just bother the hell out of the other team. And everybody loves that when he's on your team, right? Like, you know, he's getting technicals called because of he's snoring and he's, you know, uh, and he's not a kid, you know, 23 used to be young, but in this league, it's not right. So he's got make or break status as a second round pick there you don't get to hang out at um 25 as a second rounder that's not contributing it, it's a rare thing so he knows it's go time he's only getting the opportunity uh because there are opportunities with this team because they don't have an you know they don't have established nba players so i say enjoy it um yes the scotty pippen stuff bothers me because i don't think it's fair to him you know, it's definitely not fair to Scottie Pippen, who I do not like as a human because he disses Michael Jordan. And as a Nick fan, I'm like, please don't do that. Even I, I don't want to see that. Don't downplay that. He he killed my hopes and dreams as a child. Don't act like he wasn't the greatest thing. Um, so yeah, but I'm I'm down with Kamara's hustle. I'm down with seeing him. I'm rooting for him. He's not going to learn to shoot in a week. So he's not going to end up being an impactful player this year as far as like, Oh my gosh, but hope I told you it's all about hope. I know. And that's what he's that. That's what he, you know, that's what he personifies right now for blazer fans is hope. So to be fair, 
He shot 54.6% last year at Dayton and 36% on three. So there's been some better offensive shooting percentages from him. He can continue to develop in that area. But yeah, I, I hear you, man. It's hope. Got to have hope. I'm fine with that. I just, you know. I'll, I'm looking, And he doesn't embarrass. I mean, he, he plays looking, hard and he doesn't know, embarrass himself. I know. It's great. It's a great story right now. Let's see what he does against better teams. You're just not – you're not starting the book yet. You haven't started no, writing the book I, yet. I mean, look. As a, you know, yeah. You're going to wait a little bit. It's, it's a short story. It's not a, it's not a full book yet. It's just, as far as I'm concerned, the Blazers and Cronin need to be judged on their ability to build a contender because they bailed on – potentially building at least a good team around Dame because they felt like the better path was this. So, you know, guys need to, they need to produce guys who are going to look like they're going to make that happen. Because if you just next five years, you're just a middling 500 team and barely and maybe below that, then it's all ways. And so, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, Kamara looks like a keeper on defense. He has to improve his offense and I'm not going to, you know, act like he's some, found gem right now at six points per game shooting 29 percent. that doesn't mean he's not doing a good job but damn like can we let someone like get some more games under their belt and and you know no perform better <laughs> over a, a period of time before we just completely overhype them like, yeah come on that's all i'm saying but we'll see well, I'm, wow. like I said, <laughs> Debbie Downer, Aaron. Fenton. I'm, I'm, I'm living it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Him okay, coming good. in. You, you'll bring. But you know, my, 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 for a long time, my favorite player of all time was Gerald Wilkins, second round draft pick out of Tennessee Chattanooga. So like, I, I, I lived the dream of when rooting for a team who stunk and just super pumped that a second round pick made a team. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I get it. Um, why, why the the fan base is excited about it. And um, I think it's worth, I think it's worth getting excited about because of the hope that's involved that if this guy ends up being a rotation player, then you got to give, you know, you got to tip your cap to the scouts and to the you know front office. But, but it won't make up for it. If Aiden's, Aiden's not, you know, elite. And if Williams can't play, so those are um, those are bigger picture things, but small victories are victories, nonetheless. So we'll take okay, them. We're good. We'll, we'll have the perfect yin and yang on this. <laughs> okay. Now that I've solidified my hate for the week, um, what else we got? Well, that you you mentioned it. We will say this: they're three and four, right? Like they last time we talked, they won one. They won three in a row. They played Memphis twice, so that's helpful. So they almost got two wins against the – man, they're bad. Memphis is bad. Man, I was thinking this question just came in my head as I was walking around today to ask you, who would you rather be, Memphis today or the Blazers? Like you know you're really bad, but you do have John Morant. Chilling. Oh, I'd rather be the the Memphis Grizzlies all day long. Because you already got him, right? You you're just gonna you hold John Jaron and Bane. You're light years ahead of the yeah. I'm just saying, like, you got a John could just take you. John, yeah, not if John, John, not if John never can never get back on the court, or you know, like that's what I'm saying. I'm like give him the benefit of the doubt that he's gonna figure it out. I hope so, man. But I was like, they're always <laughs> six at at the time when I was thinking this, they were, you know, they were 0-6. They had just lost to the Blazers after choking away a victory, right? Just awful. Like, everything you did. They, It was funny. We had two teams do the exact same thing on back-to-back -back nights. They just flipped. You know, one choked away the first one. The other one choked away the second one. And I just thought, like, gosh, John Morant, you, you have to be sitting there, hopefully, and saying, like, oh, this is what happens when I um, – Immature. Oh, his his <laughs> and, teammates have to want to smack him around, don't you think? Oh, I mean, I, I, they got to be furious. The whole, I mean, you start out zero and six, and then you you're only not zero and seven because you played a Blazer team that didn't know how to doesn't know how to close and isn't awesome, right? Like it's it's just 
amazing how bad they are. And here's Josh sitting out 25 games because he couldn't stay off Instagram with a, a, with a weapon, right? Like not just having the weapon, (laughs) which is, that's a whole thing, but like, don't get on live Instagram. Like what, like two weeks after you already did it. Um, Yeah. I just was thinking that I'm like, with Scoot and Shade and Sharp, like you, you're you're hoping one of them's John Morant, without the problems. And if you're Memphis, you're hoping John Morant just, you know, cannot can mature and play. I have questions. I don't know. I mean, I hope he can, but what makes what makes a guy suddenly mature? Twenty five game suspension That's- and loss of a bunch of money. Yeah, I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, it's not like you didn't know. You up saying, "Dude, you're an idiot. You're killing us." I can't imagine that didn't happen before. So I'm hopeful that you're right, and that's all it takes, and it doesn't take something worse or something that keeps him out of basketball for you know bigger picture reasons or whatever. But yeah, I just thought it was uh, it was just an interesting moment. Like, huh, this team's bad, and they're de- they're 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 really they're key. And you're right that, you know, they have a big man who's spectacular, right? And still young. And Bain has got the biggest biceps in basketball and can shoot. So, yes, they've got they've got some things they can count on that the Blazers are not there yet. But Who would you rather just have? was a moment ja, of – If Josh straightens out, Ja, Bain, Jackson, or oh, Scoot, of course. Shady. So, well, that, it's not a question of that. It's a question of the straightening out part, like the part that I don't know if he can. Like I hope, oh, he but will. he'll be fine. All right, there it is. You said it. There it is. Doctor Fentress says he's all good. Bet it all. Bet it all. This is what he needed. He needed this. This. All right. I hope you're right. Now, now I hope you're right. He's, he lost money. He's hurting his team. Like, it, I mean, if I'm wrong, he's the biggest moron ever. So I'm, I'm betting on that. Now, let's get to someone else real quick before we go. Have you watched Wemby play? Oh, yeah. He's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's like, I, I've never, I mean, it's just weird. I'm old. We're old. And we haven't seen it. This, you know what this I mean? would be like, like Ralph Sampson <laughs> with that kind of dexterity yeah. and athleticism and, and skills. It's, it's, he, okay. He might be a guy who wins seven titles and seven MVPs, and people are talking about him as the GOAT over Jordan and LeBron. Now, I know I was saying a lot in 19, but he does things that are literally unguardable. Yes. You cannot defend it. There's, you would have to be his height, right, to get up high enough to block his shot. From anywhere on and, the court. And, but he also does it on the other end. Right. You know, he, like we right. have, and I mean, I, I like, so I, I, you know, obviously Nick's fan, Porzingis. I had the dream. Right. And he's good. No, Porzingis he's good. is good. He just not, and he's a three, you know, he, but he's not a one. <laughs> and he doesn't play defense like, he doesn't play defense like Bill Russell. Um, so I just see – it's just so weird. It doesn't look – it doesn't look sustainable because we've just never seen it, right? You know, like I'm like, is he not – are they going to figure it out? Can they stop it? Is he going to get hurt? I mean, That's to me, the way he – yeah. I, they just don't exist. Like there's not another seven-foot-three dude waiting in the wings, right? There's other 6'10 guys – not a lot, but you know what I mean? Like Durant, we saw it with Durant, but Durant didn't even want to be seven feet. He wanted to lie about it forever. But we know he's on un, he's unguardable. Like he fades back at seven feet tall. You have to be eight foot seven to block his shot, right? And that's Durant. Right. And Durant's got good handle. Um, but he does not pass the way Wemby has shown to pass at times. And he's so young. He already sees the court like and he does do things now because he doesn't under, he hasn't played in the NBA yet. And in France you could do it, right? You know, like, oh, I could try to this cross court pass. And you're like, no, no, you can't. And uh 
you know, guys are athletic. They'll block your shot every once in a while. If you go hard at the rim, they can go hard at the rim. But like, what happens when he figures stuff out? Like the the nuances of the game. Like, what do you? What? How are you going to stop this guy? Like, once he figures out the refs and he figures out pace. Oh, I mean, it's going to be crazy. But yeah, for me, that's the big thing. Like to be fifty, and to be seeing something that I only saw in video games. Um, is and I'm fighting the urge, right? I fought the urge to be like to just be like, oh, he's a unicorn, and that no, no, this is a true unicorn from what we've seen early. Like this is Porzingis wanted, I you know, he was he was like the unicorn. He was going to save the Knicks, and he wasn't. He was good. He was injured a lot. He was decent. Um. But no, he wasn't. He didn't change the game. I just look at Pop and go, "My gosh, you are a you are a blessed man. You are one lucky, lucky man." <laughs> you know, like, how could you get so this in your lap? So ridiculous. and he's gonna coach till he's ninety because he's just gonna be like, "Why would you leave? Why would you stop coaching? You gotta win some more titles." All right, cool. Well, I think we covered everything that needed to be covered for now. Yeah, with this team heading. I'll, I'll actually be down in LA for Lakers Blazers, okay, cool. and I'm going to Utah. I'm not going to Sac on Wednesday, so we'll see how this team looks against LeBron and AD, and how they look against marketing and of course Fox and Sabonis. If Sabonis is healthy, and then we'll go from there. It'll be interesting. Rest of the month. All right, thanks for listening to the play. No more injuries. That's what we root for. Right. No more injuries. Let's see the young guys develop. Let's see them grow together. Let's get Scoot back out there. Scoot's been shooting. You never practice on for the game shooting. I'm like, you ain't ain't nothing wrong with you. Nah, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> use your left hand. Use your left hand. You got an interrupt a little different than that. Oh no, not Ann. Scoot. Scoot's got the ankle. Ann's got the ankle. I saw Scoot. Okay. I saw Ann's hand wrapped up. I almost wept. Anyway, alright. Thanks for listening to the Pleasure Focus Podcast. We'll be back shortly. Please click the subscribe button. Leave us a positive rating. And we will continue to bring you all the Pleasure Focus Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Pleasure Focus Podcast. We'll be back shortly. Please click the subscribe button. Leave us a positive rating. And we will continue to get you through this season of development. By remaining as positive, positive we can be about development as opposed to uh, harping too much on the losses. The losses are about to come. Thank you.